Hello everyone. This is Beyond Boundaries. Welcome to the show. We have Mrs. Pooja Bose, principal of Pastic World School. Welcome to the show. Hello everyone. I am Pooja Bose and it's a pleasure to be on this interview. I look forward to answering all your questions. You have such a vast experience from building strong foundational management for the schools. training teachers and shaping minds for the future so how do you think this affects the new kids which are coming with such parents who are moving around the cities and what new things you feel that those kids need to be taken care of on the other hand i think traveling and moving around in different cities is an opportunity it is a very enriching experience If you talk about my own children we were moving from one city to the other almost every 2 or 3 years it teaches a lot of adaptability to the kids it's an enriching experience they develop lot of resilience they also develop traits to meet new people uh, interact with strangers to adapt and also to make a mark in the schools in the settings where they go to over a period of time as they grow this becomes their quality this becomes their strength so when people travel from one school to the other or one city to the other there's a lot of adaptation which happens and adaptation is always a good quality and as you know that uh, the one who adapts quicker is has greater chances of survival as compared to others i think moving movement and uh, getting out of your comfort zone is a good thing i learned that lot of teachers are very you know new teachers which are coming up they are emotionally getting connected with the kids a lot but unfortunately as the time demands they have to move to another city because of lot of reasons so any uh, suggestion or thing you can tell them like how they can cope up with you know moving environment and changing uh, generations because the kind of emotional attachment they carry uh, maybe the other uh, kids and today's generation don't have and they are moving around also so what do you think uh, a teacher or these new teachers can do having attachments is good but sticking on to those attachments is not good be it a teacher or a professional you could be an it professional you could be a teacher you could be a bureaucrat you could be in ias i ics or you could be a soldier you have to move uh, from one place to the other that's the very nature of these jobs you have to be attached with detachment because too much of attachment in your professional world in your professional field will lead to a scenario where you get nervous moving on and moving forward i think as an individual i have always been very excited about moving to a new place and i have always looked forward to a new setting a new posting a new school a new job i think that excitement helped me get energized with my new assignments and it has always worked well the idea is to to enjoy moving and uh, relishing different fields and different uh, environments once you start doing that and once you have that mindset i think it will be a fun ride for you how have you succeeded with such an ease in aligning the academic and institutional visions uh, which you and the management carries for the students while keeping in mind that you have to collaborate with teachers with administrative staff and you have to manage everyone together so how with such an ease you are able to you know move this uh, take this forward it wasn't easy like i told you that i have been a teacher i have risen through the ranks it hasn't been that uh, i straight away took the chair of a principal fortunately for me i have done the role of teacher as a primary level as a tgt as a pgt i have also worked in different departments like the examination department the timetable department and been a coordinator so i know what it is to be in each role i know the challenges i know the way to move navigate your way in your, your professional settings so it's an art it's it doesn't come automatically it has to be nurtured it has to be more of a hands on learning at least for me it was more of 
hands on learning while i was working i was learning in our country we don't have any training school for principals okay you don't have any college where you train principals so over your professional journey you learn how to be a leader to be a leader anyway it demands that you have to balance so many forces around you you have to coordinate amicably in the modern times people don't just accept a leader as a leader till they are convinced that this person deserves to be one you have a lot of different experiences throughout your journey what do you feel are the highlighting few of the highlighting challenges you have you must have not expected many of those but few highlighted ones if you could tell us and how you overcome those how those have helped the journey you which you are going through right now resources everywhere are a limiting factor your acumen lies in making the most out of the resources that you have now those resources could be human time financial or even the infrastructure not everywhere that i worked that i had the best of infrastructure there were sometimes challenges of weather when i was working in northeastern india the weather was a big challenge it used to rain almost 9 months in a year many a times the schools were closed because of rain i'm talking about times when we never had online education also so you can well imagine the kind of damage that i mean the weather disturbances had on the running a smooth curriculum itself was a huge challenge the smaller towns of our country also have schools those schools struggle with good quality teachers good settings in school they don't even have a playground they don't even have toilets enough toilets for boys and girls sometimes the books don't reach on time sometimes it's raining sometimes it's snowing so education when we talk about equal opportunities for education it's not there government has started focusing now on extracurricular activities and holistic development and those kind of things still there is lot of you know competitive mind and uh, still which used to exist in older times people say that it has gone but it hasn't gone really even today you know marks are important that race is important and theoretical things are still you know being judged to get an admission to top institute what do you think can be done by the teachers or should do that can bring a little bit about a change in this aspect uh, i don't think competition is bad i don't think theory is also bad everything is good in its rightful place and rightful amount see we are in a populated country obviously we don't have abundance of seats in colleges we don't have uh, you know abundance of finances hence we struggle with numbers uh, whenever we have to uh, choose people whenever we have to filter out individuals for a particular position or a particular seat naturally there will be competition that's the reality of our lives so we have to teach our students also to compete how do you compete what is healthy competition that is something which needs to go alongside you cannot be a shark you cannot think that if i eat others i am going to outshine others you have to outshine others with your own ability you have to be better than the rest of them and outshine them rather than you know killing competition or you know trying to subdue others you can't scream and shout and dampen the voices around you i think what you should speak should be well meaning should make sense and you should genuinely be better than the others and you will be able to make a mark for yourself i think that is what we need to teach our kids we are struggling with too much of theory too much of content but i think the greater struggle is in the fact that we are unable to find joy in learning that content because the teachers who are teaching those things themselves don't feel joyful enough happy enough to teach it so they also do it as a matter of factly as a matter of routine that lack of passion is also transmitted to the students when you find a teacher who's you know who has a spring in her feet and who enters the class with cheer 
and who is able to bring that joy and passion and excitement in the classroom when she is teaching a topic it automatically comes in the students students are very fertile they are like sponges they will absorb whatever kind of things you teach them so i think that that needs to be just more prevalent amongst the teachers we are fortunate that uh, the government has give is giving us more and more freedom unlike previously when this much syllabus has to be taught this has to be done this has there's so many options that are coming in the question paper so nowhere is it written that you have to do all the chapters you have to pick and choose whatever you want to do whatever clicks well with you whatever you connect better with so do that and students also have lot of choice lot of options we are not so stringent now about marks we are discouraging publicizing he's the topper she's the topper this much percentage 0.001 percentage to the you know nth value we have to post in in the public domain all that is going slowly and steadily so it's a good time to be but the thing is that we have to change with the changing times thank you so much for uh, taking out our time and before leaving uh, any final words or concluding you would like to say suggest or anything you would like to share no well, thank you for this interview it was fun it was like a rediscovery of my own self so thank you for that i had an uh, immense pleasure and uh, such a nice time talking to you thank you thank you so much